John Oates here with Hanksters Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. Once again, coming to you with another addition to our inventory. This is a 1968 Plymouth GTX. And before we uh, go any further, just for all the Mopar guys out there, we do know uh, that this is not the correct color, but this has been redone uh, in the inviolet color. Um, so it's a real nice looking paint job on this car. Uh, nice, smooth, and shiny the whole way around, and you'll get to see that as we walk around here. But again, it is has been redone in that color, and we do understand that it's not the original color for this car. Uh, but with that said, um, you can uh, we'll, you know walk around, check out the body panels. We do have a steel hood on our GTX. It does have the 440 inside of that hood scoop there. And that is what is underneath the hood. And we'll get to that here a little bit later as well. As far as wheels and tires, um, they've upgraded the wheels and tires. They went with a set of American Racing wheels. These are just a five spoke design. Don't know the exact name of them, but again, it's an aluminum wheel, 15 inches, both front and rear, and Cooper Cobra radial GT tires on it also, front and rear. Now again, our GTX, they went with the white GTX stripe. We've got the GTX emblems back here on the quarter panels as well. Very nice bright work on this car. So you've got the drip rail moldings here. You have the driver's side mirror, which this is a remote mirror here. And then you can see the fitment too. Your gaps on the front side of the door as well as the back side. Good, nice and tight gaps there. We'll open our door up, take a quick peek inside. We've got the full black vinyl interior, the high back bucket seats, factory dash, factory instrumentation. It does have a few aftermarket gauges. It also has an aftermarket AM FM CD player. I believe uh, it is a premier name brand which is made by Pioneer. Front and back seat belts in this car also. We close the door, it closes up nice and easy. Our glass is all in good shape too, even the vent window. So again, there's no cracks or chips in any of this glass. Uh, your rear quarter panels, big long quarter panels. And again, nice and straight the whole way back along the side of the car. As we come around the back side here, we're gonna take notice of some more of the bright work here. We've got the chrome rear bumper. Of course, we've got that Plymouth GTX cladding back here or trim. Um, you've got the, you know, the striping in here, of course your taillights here, the lenses are in great shape, the bezels and bright work around that is all in good shape. And you can notice our tailpipes down here, the extensions, uh, it's just a, uh, it's a round or oval uh, slash cut uh, chrome exhaust tip. So what we'll do next is we're going to open our trunk up. So first take notice of your gaps and elevations of the trunk. You can see the window back there for the rear glass. Again, it's in good shape. You've got all of your bright work molding around the outside there. That is in good condition too. We'll open our trunk lid up and take a look inside. Bear with me until I get the key in the right way. And as we raise our trunk lid up, you're going to see the underside's been painted that same in violet. Nice and shiny on the underside of the trunk lid. Inside the trunk, very nice looking trunk here. Nice solid trunk floor pans in this car. Painted the correct uh, uh, trunk spatter paint here. We've got the uh, a set of uh, floor mats here also that you can place inside the car and use. Um, we always take them out because we want you to see the condition of the carpeting on the inside. But again, they are here available for you. Also, your trunk seals and weather stripping, all nice and soft the whole way around. They meet back here in the center. And again, the trunk's nice and dry, and I don't foresee any reason why you would have any kind of moisture in there at all. It's going to seal up real nice here. We'll close that. We'll walk around the other side now. Again, we want to take notice of the sides, nice and straight the whole way down along the side here. Again, our door elevations, you can see it lines up right in line with our quarters and our fenders, so you'll have no problems there. No waviness, again, it's nice and straight down the side. Our glass on the passenger side, just like the other side, no cracks, no chips, it's in good shape. All of your bright work around your window, your drip rails, 
that is all in great shape too. Even your door handles, sometimes you'll get some pitting on those, but again, your door handles on this car are very nice. We'll open our door up. That way you get to take a peek on the inside from the passenger side. Again, factory dash, you've got a few aftermarket gauges, factory automatic center console in there as well. Close that up. Again, this side shuts nice and easy. Door gaps, very uniform front to back there. Again, we've got those white stripes. Looks like we've got a power antenna too in our fender there. And again, we'll come around to the front. And this is where we'll get to uh, talking about uh, more of our bright work here. Again, chrome front bumper is in nice shape. We've got our GTX grill with the GTX emblem right in the center. The grill's all solid intact. Nothing broke or cracked in it. All of your bright work and trim work around there is in good shape. Headlights, all of those are just your traditional sealed beam units. All glass lenses and those are in good shape. All the bezels around here, around your lights, those are in great shape too. Now again, this is a steel hood. You see the dual hood scoops here. Each side has that 440 badging in the scoop. We do have hood pins here too. They are functional hood pins and you can see here that they are tethered here with this cable. So what we'll do is we're going to open up our hood. We're going to just remove the hood pins. And it does have a latch also. And then with both parts, you have the secondary one from underneath. And there's our hood. Uh, we look at the underside. You can see it's been painted that same in violet color, nice and shiny. The hood insulation here, all intact. You don't see any pieces of it torn up or ripped or hanging down. So that looks nice and neat underneath the hood. As far as the engine compartment, at least they did do this correctly on the car, and that is they kept the engine compartment all the same color as the exterior of the car. That's the way your Mopars were. Now, as far as this car goes, again, like I said, it is a non-original motor, 440 cubic inch Mopar engine. You can see our car has the chrome air cleaner and valve covers on it. Those valve covers have the breather and the PCB valve in them. Underneath our air cleaner, we've got a quick fuel brawler, dual feed, four barrel carburetor. does have electric choke on it as well. Uh, as far as the ignition system, they've upgraded that. We've got a MSD Pro Billet Distributor. We've got an MSD Blaster 2 coil along with an MSD set of plug wires. These are the eight and a half it, or eight and a half millimeter superconductor wires there. Now you can see all the lines there for your heater and AC are all hooked up. This does have aftermarket air conditioning. That's what you see right here. Uh, factory style uh, radiator, but it does have the shroud. It's got a six blade fan on it here, manual fan. Uh, it also has a uh, electric pusher fan on the front here also. It's got your tranny cooler here also. So that's probably why they elected to put that uh, electric fan on it as well. Uh, but as I said, 440 cubic inch motor. Uh, we've got aluminum Edelbrock intake on it. For headers, we've got ceramic coated long tube headers, dual exhaust, Flowmaster mufflers with the tailpipes at the rear of the car. And then behind this engine, We've got a Torque Flight 727 automatic transmission with that eight and three quarter inch Mopar rear, the shore grip differential with the 323 gear ratio in it as well. Um, other things that we mentioned uh, underneath the hood, power steering on this car, power brakes on it, it's disc brake up front, drums on the rear of the car. Um, now, most of our cars will always have a battery disconnect up here. Uh, but on this particular car, we didn't need to do that. They've actually wired in a disconnect into the center console. So you would just open the center console up, reconnect your battery right there. It's just a, a twist type lever, uh, and then you're ready to go for that. So um, that's pretty much it for our GTX here. Uh, we've been around the outside, in the inside of it. Now the next thing we're going to do is put this on our lift and go through the underside of it as well. All right, so we've got our 1968 Plymouth GTX up on the lift. We're gonna go through the underside as we always do. We'll start with the uh, steering and suspension components up front, work our way to the back, and then of course finish off with driveline 
and wheels and tires that's on the car. So as far as steering and suspension up front, as with most of your Mopars, you're going to have the strut rod front suspension along with the torsion bar front suspension here. Now on those, you're going to have rubber uh, bushings on the strut rods. You're going to have them on your torsion bars also. And everything looks to be in really good condition as far as that goes. Um, as far as your control arms, it's just your stock standard control arms up front for your suspension. So stock lowers and uppers. And as far as steering, We've got power steering on this vehicle. You see your center link here, just your standard tie rods here. All of your rubber dust boot covers, those are all intact everywhere on the front end. And you can tell everything's been greased and maintained very well throughout its life. As far as braking up front, this is power brakes. We've got disc brakes up front. We have drum brakes on the rear. Now for driveline here, we'll just kind of work our way through this as we walk backwards. Driveline, we've got a non-original motor. This is the 440 cubic inch Mopar engine here. Um, it is date coded, I believe eight, I think 29 of 66. So we know from that that it's not the original motor, but it is a 440. Um, that is backed up with a 727 torque flight automatic transmission. This does have the flywheel cover on it, the inspection cover, so it's going to keep dirt and debris out of it. You can see it's got a nice uh, transmission pan underneath here. It's finned and I believe that would be chrome. Uh, all the way around your gasket here, everything looks dry. Same thing with the oil pan on the engine, everything looks good and dry. Even back here at your rear seal looks nice and dry there too, no wet spots. As far as your transmission cross member, that's good, all solid, intact, in good condition. Drive shaft, it's a balanced drive shaft. It's gonna help eliminate any kind of vibration you might have in your drive line. And then we end up with the rear end. This is an eight and three quarter inch Mopar rear. Uh, it's the shore grip differential inside there, and it's a 323 gear ratio also. Now, on the back for our suspension, we do have the multi-leaf rear suspension back here. Brand new set of the coilover shocks here, just uh, you know, just a stock replacement coilover shock for the car, um, and that, and like I said, those are brand new. The exhaust work, we've got long tube headers starting up here at the front. We've got dual exhaust all the way back. You've got your crossover pipe here. We've got a set of Flowmaster mufflers, so you know it's going to sound good and perform very nicely and the correct style tailpipes that go up over top of your rear end and then of course they exit out the rear nice set of chrome slash cut exhaust tips back there to finish everything off the floors on this car you can see those are in good shape there's no patching that i can see whatsoever on the floors now this is undercoated uh, most of which was factory undercoating and with these Mopars they always seem to you know heavily undercoat them so you're going to see that that is uniform the whole way back through the car. Frame sections those are all in good shape to front and rear. We also got the emergency brake all hooked up so everything all the correct cables, correct frame hangers, uh, everything all the way back to those rear drum brakes it's all complete. Fuel tank, it's a stock fuel tank. Your mounting hardware, as far as your straps, bolts, so forth like that, all in good shape, and your tank is in great shape. This tank actually looks like it's fairly new too. There's no, no dents or dings whatsoever in that. And lastly, we've got our wheels and tires on this car. We've got 15 inch wheels, all four corners. They're American Racing wheels. I'm not sure the exact name of these, um, they're one that's kind of uh, just out of the ordinary for us because we're so used to the torque thrust style wheels. But they are American Racing aluminum wheels, 15 inch. Mounted on those are a set of Cooper Cobra radial GT tires. On the front, we've got two 35-60-15s. On the back, we've got two 75-60-15s. Uh, so that's going to give it a little bit of a rake to the car tread on front and rear tires both is in really good shape as you can see there in the video so again those are going to last you a good long time so what we'll do next as we always do get this down off the lift we'll <laughs>